All right, we are back with your favorite podcast of the week. But as you may have noticed, uh, we have a whole new look and feel and brand. And uh, you're now listening to episode number 443 of Location Weekly. So yes, we're no longer this week in location-based marketing. We are Location Weekly because we're bringing the news to you every week anyways. And it's just shorter, easier to find, search optimize, all those kinds of things. And I don't know. A little bit cooler, hopefully. The uh, the branding. It's been a while. We've had the same same look and feel. So uh, excited about that, and lots of other new changes coming in 2020 uh, that I can't talk about yet uh, for the LVMA, but plenty uh, in the pipeline. So, uh, Brianna, how are you? I'm awesome. How are you? I'm well. It's been it's been a busy, hectic uh, last few days. I'm uh, on my way to Vegas this week for the largest of all cannabis conferences, 45,000 people, all business people, uh, investors and tech companies and retail side. And so down there pitching the, my new company, obviously, uh, ground level insights and, um, yeah, um, just lots going on with that and, and lots going on with the LBMA too. Tons, tons of things in the works for next year. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's good to hear, you know, we had our, um, our quarterly meeting last week and all of our international folks were in town and um, our holiday party. And so we're just kind of wrapping things up. But, you know, as soon as you think that things are slowing down, that's when some of the bigger deals start to happen. So we have not stopped and I anticipate we likely won't, but um, I'm looking forward to a little bit of family time coming up. <laughs> Yeah, it'll be nice. It'll be nice to kind of get into the holidays and have maybe a little bit of a break, at least a couple of days. Yeah, for sure. we'll, we'll see how it goes. So um, anyhow, so we have a good show for you, uh, as usual. Uh, three industry news stories, three member news stories, a wide array this week. Last week, I felt like we were heavy on the AR stuff. Um, it's a little more spread out in terms of the different types of tech and solutions uh, this week. Um, and so as usual, I'll let Aubriana kick it off. Uh, taking us to New York City. Yeah, but we are actually kicking it off with AR, you know. So yeah. uh, we are not completely week, but um, this is a pretty interesting story. This is from the New York Times. And, um, you know, this kind of comes from Graham Roberts, who was the former director of immersive storytelling at the New York Times, now has moved on to Google. So he is now the digital design lead at Google's... Um, think tank called brand studio um but before he left he sort of had this last you know uh ar project that he was working on and it has finally come to fruition and what it is is it is a location-based air pollution ar app um, and there's kind of four main focuses and the app is usually you utilizing this ar visualization to show air pollution around you as well as compared to other cities um, and so the four different factors, first, it'll show you the air pollution that the U.S. Environmental Agency says is good air quality. Um, and all of this is measured in micrograms per cubic meter over 24 hours. I have no idea what that means. But if you download the app, you can actually just see the air pollution. Um, is, metric. That's why you don't understand it. <laughs> it's probably true. <laughs> that amongst other things. Okay. Um, but yeah, so yeah, the, I was trying to explain to our au pair who's from Ecuador. I'm like, listen, we're the only country that does things really backwards and we don't have anything in the metric units. So um, anyway, so the, you can see what they say is good air quality and then you can see the air quality where you currently are, which is pretty cool. And then you can also see San Francisco, how the quality of the air was affected after all of the uh, campfire wildfires that were going on. Um, those devastating fires that, you know, we've been hearing so much about. And then the fourth is in New Delhi, India, which apparently has like the worst air quality around the world. Um, it's the most extreme. And so you kind of see it's, I mean, it's just like dots kind of flying through the air, you know, as you would imagine. And so with New Delhi, it's like, very hard to see, right? I mean, imagine that it's hard to breathe as well. Um, so I think this is a very cool use of location data, especially in, as it is in combination with storytelling. And I think that's really interesting. I mean, obviously the focus of something like this is to share the challenges that we have with air pollution and what's causing that and what we can do about it and all of those things. But um, I have a theory about this. <laughs> so. Okay. 
my crazy uh, conspiracy theory here is that the New York Times, you know, has done a lot of stories on location implications in terms of privacy, um, everything in terms of compliance issues. And I think that they said, well, let's test this out ourselves. And how can we get firsthand, lo firsthand um, location data, first party location data of our own? And in order to do that, we need to create a location based app. So let's do this and let's see how creepy location data can truly be so that we can continue to expand and write about it in our stories and really get a truth set, right? I don't know. That's just my crazy conspiracy theory. But yeah, <laughs> I think this is a really cool story. And uh, I like I think it. It's I like, super cool. Yeah, the combination of storytelling and using technology to do it. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, in news media in general, I think, you know, is really trying to reinvent uh, the way they do storytelling. I remember I spoke at some conference at, uh, I don't even remember what university it was some years ago now. It was specifically in the, in the news media storytelling uh, world. Um, and, uh, you know, they were talking about some of these technologies and this is years ago, like in sort of in their infancy and kind of, um, you know, being, being able to kind of virtually recreate uh, crime scenes and kind of, you know, report on those things, you know, with, with visuals and all kinds of different kinds of things. And here you have, you know, obviously looking at air, you know, air quality and pollution. Um, uh, and maybe you're right, maybe you're not. But at the end of the day, they're finding a way to kind of take the power of location data and, you know, uh, and kind of visualize that data and do something Kind of interesting with it and so you know they can they can kind of knock uh you, you know location uh, data collection all they want um but i think at the end of the day the general public is, is seeing the utility more and more uh, every day and and i think that uh you know we're going to see a lot more of these types of use cases as you know as time goes on so Anyway, I think it's a good story. I think it's a cool project. You know, it would be interesting when I was in Australia and Sydney uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, like people were staying inside. You couldn't breathe. Like the air was so thick with uh, pollution uh, from the from the forest fires going on there right now. Uh, and in summer has hasn't even started yet. So it's going to be incredible. Uh, I can imagine. So, um, yeah, it's something, unfortunately, in, in today's world that we have to... Uh, factor in to our outdoor living. It's true. There you go. All right, on to our second story. So sort of staying in New York City, um, you know, I think it was two weeks ago, whenever Karsten was on the show, uh, and we did that sort of crazy recording while we were all traveling, um, we, we talked about Starbucks kind of opening up a store in New York City that was mobile order pickup only. So no actual like seating or anything in the store, it, like strictly a mobile pickup uh, uh, location. And so here's a company called Bandit, um, spelled exactly like the word B-A-N-D-I-T. Uh, founders guy is a guy named Max Crowley. And so they've opened up a, a cafe in Manhattan um, and, uh, the, this, the whole premise of their business is around mobile order and pickup. And so they built this app based experience, um, and you can kind of be anywhere in the city and in less than five minutes away from a bandit location, you can sort of order and pick up your coffee. Um, so the, the initial location is at 46th and Lexington. Uh, so kind of right in the heart there, um, and they do have a little bit of sort of seating or lounge area to hang out in if you so choose to do so. They're finding most of the people literally just order, grab their stuff and go. Um, but uh, there's a couple other little interesting things that they've kind of built into this. So it's not just coffee. When you go into the app, like there's a few other products available and it's whatever is fresh. So they have, they built it, the app platform to be sort of like a digital menu board same as you kind of walk into a restaurant there's the chalkboard with whatever they have that day um, they do that through the app in the same order only environment uh, but in a digital uh, fashion and so they have like a literal up-to-date display board uh, in the app on in terms of whatever is available so they've got like things like chocolate croissants and banana walnut muffins and other things that you know might be available that day or, or not um, and they're kind of updating it as it goes along. Uh, they say, uh, this guy uh, says that kind of they're taking their inspiration not so much from Starbucks as they are from uh, a Chinese uh, behemoth called Luckin. Uh, I don't know if you've come across these guys, but they're huge. Like these guys are 
growing at an astronomical rate. They've got over 2,300 stores already planning to open uh, 2,500 by the end of the year. Uh, so they're just accelerating like crazy right now. Uh, and 90% of the luck-in stores in China are literally these types of pickup only uh, destination points. So um, that's kind of the model that we're going for. I think you're going to see a lot more of these, not just from Bandit, Starbucks, and, and maybe Dunkin' and everybody will kind of get into these very, really small footprint stores uh, that are just about order ahead and pick up. Um, so it's kind of cool. The other thing about Bandit is they've also tested a subscription offering, uh, $15 per month flat rate, unlimited coffee, cold brew, and some other specials um, as well for a dollar. So kind of cool. I think, um, I mean, I could see, you know, that this was, if I lived there and I, this was, you know, sort of on my route, you know, I could, I could see myself doing this. I mean, seriously, 15 bucks a month for all you can drink coffee. If the coffee is good, you spend that for yeah. three, you know, three days, right. You know, yeah. um, if you drink your coffee out of the house. So I like this. I mean, you know that I am a sucker for convenience apps. Uh, so anything that can say like find the coffee and something that's fresh near near me And I also like the idea that it is based on what's fresh because nobody wants a still croissant. So yeah exactly. <laughs> um, But yeah, I mean, I think we're seeing this trend, you know, you're seeing like target with a the um, you know pull-in drive-through kind of a concept that they've got somebody bringing it out to your car you order ahead with Chick-fil-A, you know, you've got it with Starbucks. Now you've got this, that's, you know, multi-location. Um, and I just think that these types of things are going to continue. So they're going to continue to iterate and find more ways to make it convenient, fresh, what's available. So connecting demand with, um, you know, what is actually there versus having to recreate things. Exactly. Yeah. All right, well, let's go to India for this next story. Uh, this is Dentsu, um, and they have launched a hyperlocal insights tool for um, out of home. So this is, you know, Dentsu Aegis Network. Um, and so they have this uh, proprietary audience intelligence tool that they're calling Dan, um, Dan Explore. And so they use the data sciences division under its suite of Dan Data Labs kind of confusing all this Dan and data and stuff. But anyways, um, basically the hyperlocal insights, they say that they have about 300 different attributed um, filters that, you know, you can base on based on a location. So, you know, the challenge they have said in, in any type of out of home planning, you know, for billboards and the like is that you really need to have a good understanding of the crowd and the audience that's driving by that on a regular basis and in that area. And so they have things that you can understand now, like they say audience passions. I don't know how they measure that, but that's interesting. But demographics, um, trending topics, shopping preferences, uh, television content preferences. They said there's like, you know, 300 of these different signals that they get from the digital ecosystem. And so they're kind of putting these all into this platform and you can basically filter it based on a location and get a better understanding there. Um, so, you know, I don't know that this is really new. I think we've seen other companies like Clear Channel doing things like this. Um, but, you know, for the billboard planning and the insight for any location, I'm not sure if Clear Channel or other, um, you know, outdoor, you know, any type of media places are utilizing 300 different filters. I mean, that's a lot. And I would love to know, like, what are all the different data points that they're bringing in in terms of where they're getting them from and how they're sourced and how they're sort of streamlining those and, um, you know, uniting those because uh, obviously signal data is very different than a unique signal type. And this is kind of aggregated at some level, but you know, I think this is this is cool. Obviously, I don't think it's new. It's not groundbreaking because we've seen it before, but maybe they haven't seen it at this scale um, and specifically for this only use case uh, up until now. But you know, hyperlocal insights always good. Yeah, for sure. No, I, I mean I'm with you. I, th I think uh, we've actually talked about a number of these types of location data platforms uh, that are oriented uh, around the out of home space and the placement of billboard and, and digital signage, um, trying to optimize that and, and more importantly measure performance of that. So, um, you know, I think maybe we haven't talked about one of these in India, but we've talked certainly talked about them in the UK or in the US, or um, I think we talked about one in, in, uh, 
in Japan uh, recently as well. So I think there, you know, there's certainly a lot of these, these movements right now to kind of use location data as a more effective way of targeting and measurement uh, in all media, like out of home for sure. But I think uh, in general, like, you know, I think the media buying agencies, um, you know, planning uh, companies are, are all over this right now. And, and, you know, just having good high quality data uh, as we all know, uh, is extremely important right now. So, um, you know, I think it's a good move for for Dentsu, um, you know, to kind of jump into this space. And, um, you know, I, I can tell you from talking to colleagues over in, in, in India specifically that, you know, the, the ad buying space is really heating up right now. Um, and so, you know, if you can have sort of high growth in terms of um, spend on ads and at the same time, you know, great tools for measurement, then why not? So, yeah, all right, so that's our three industry news stories for this week. Um, we're gonna shift over now to our member news, and uh, as usual, I will kick this section off with a story about our good friends at Mood Media. Now, interestingly enough, like we've talked, I think a fair bit in the last little while about sort of this space of in-store in sort of experiential marketing and all of that. And obviously Mood is, is one of the big players there globally in this. I think in the U.S. they have maybe close to 80% uh, market share on in-store music and, and things like that. Um, and so what, they've, what they're doing is, is more of an announcement than anything. It is um, combining three, uh, what were three separate divisions of the company under one banner uh, called Technomedia. So this is a sort of a new specialty division. It blends um, the... Uh, sort of Orlando based techno media, which was already there, uh, the mood U S premier system sales team and the mood international advanced solutions group, um, to kind of build this sort of high performance AV specialty division. So mood sort of the mood retail stuff that we're used to seeing kind of sort of stays out on its own, but all the specialty sort of high end AV installations, uh, kind of falls under this new sort of, uh, grouping. Um, so this is like design, engineering, sort of, you know, all that sort of uh, stuff around, you know, really uh, big scale, high performance, uh, AV experiential type stuff. So think like, you know, I'm guessing like things like big movie theater installations where you've got, you know, sight and sound and, you know, uh, you know, being chairs that shake and all those kinds of things that, you know, you feel the movie and hear the movie and smell the movie and all those kinds of things, you know, all kind of coming together, uh, LED walls, projection mapping, you know, all, all these sort of technologies sort of rolled under one banner. So again, not, not a, you know, a major announcement, uh, you know, but, but I think an important move to kind of for them to bring this under one banner. They have clients, obviously there is a very, Mood is a very global company, a lot of clients are retail, hospitality, big corporate event spaces, uh, and things like that as well. So yeah, um, that's all I have to say about it. Yeah, I mean, this is interesting to me. We hear a lot from Mood, but we haven't heard a ton from the other divisions and maybe obviously like their uh, direction and sort of what they oversee, as you mentioned, maybe a reason for that. Um, business intentions behind that and maybe we could tap into some of our resources over there and find out what the reasons are for that. Um, but I think that like you had mentioned, probably consolidating some of the features and the offerings that were available within each division to sort of be able to streamline that and offer that, whether it is a big movie theater or, you know, like a smaller type of a um, retail shopping store with, you know, a chain or something might be the reason there, but um, yeah. Yeah. We'll have to, we'll have to ask uh, Trey what, what's going on over there. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, let's come here to somewhat here in Atlanta and somewhat still in New York. Uh, but going back to some fried chicken, Chick-fil-A, the original chicken sandwich. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, so uh, they have kind of put together this really fun holiday campaign. And it's kind of, uh, it's cute, but there's a lot of different facets to it. So um, back on Thanksgiving Day, they sort of launched this short animated film that they had put together. I didn't see it, uh, but anyways, apparently it debuted and it was about 
sort of, um, you know, a little girl and I guess like talking about just the different times that she has and enjoys, you know, with her loved ones and her family. And so they had also done this recent survey that, that, um, had said that 93% of all who were respondent about time and, and time together said that quality time with loved ones is the most important ingredient for creating holiday memories. And they outweighed this over food, gifts, decorating, all of those things, which is really interesting. Um, So the campaign is called Together Time. And there's a couple of fun little things about this. So one is that they are doing this pop-up in New York City. So the pop-up is in Soho until the 17th. So you still have a few more days to catch it if you are around there. But it's called the Time Shop. So it brings this, like, um, you know, animated world that was inside of this short film to life and there's celebrating different times and different ways to spend time together. So they had like snack time, which obviously is where Chick-fil-A fits perfectly. And then they've got, um, I think like um, giving time and play time and story time and all of those things. Um, And so the giving room and the giving time is now where you can go and create these cards. So they're actually mailing these special cards for you. Um, free of cost. And if you can't get to Soho, you can actually do this online. I was uh, about to send mine before we started this. Uh, but you can just go to chickfilacom slash time shop and you can personalize a card and they will send it out for you. So that's kind of cool. Um, you know, I, of course, by the way, one caveat about the pop-up in Soho is that it is closed on Sundays, of course. Um, but the thing about Chick-fil-A for me is that I feel like they're always really thoughtful in their campaigns. You know, this is a little bit more exceptional and more thought provoking as it is around the holidays, but you know, even like with their kids gifts and all of those things, they're always like very family oriented. I mean, I know that in my, my daughter's kids meals before they've received something like a, um, like a free movie download for a movie night as a family. And then, um, like a couple of weeks ago, my daughter's got these cards and they're like table conversations. And so there are questions like, what was the best part about your day? And what do you want to be when you grow up? Or what was your best childhood memory? So it's kind of, you know, they're always thinking about these things that bring people together and tie so what people. do you want to be when you grow up? What do I want to be when I grow up? Yeah. Oh, goodness. It depends on the day <laughs> and the minute. <laughs> uh. Today, I just want to be a professional napper, but Hey, you know, I had a sick kid. That's what happens. Um, but yeah, so it's like lots of things that I like about them is that they're using digital and they're using location and technology based things to bring people together. And I think that they've kind of proven it again with this campaign. So I like it. It's a win for me. Um, and I'm, you can actually check out the short film on the website too. So I may play that for my kids later or something. There you go. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's a super cool story. And, you know, for me, the the, the part I really like is the, um, you know, I think the film is great and kind of the social media attention, all those kinds of things for the brand. Of course, the pop-up shop, the location aspects of being able to interact with the brand are good. But for me, the thing I love about it is the, you know, is that little postcard piece of, you know, having that 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 physical male right like that thing that you can kind of touch and feel um you know there's for me there's something about this time of year christmas getting cards in the mail you know still from people from you know family relatives that are far away whatever um you know those kinds of things are uh you know like for me one of the you know when people when they say you know spending time together is the number one uh trait that people want over this time you know one of the memories for me um is still that sort of, uh, you know, getting the cards and reading them or like if there's a, like nowadays it's a lot of photo cards, you know, people's families. And so, you know, at our house we have like a wall where it's just like we, we save the the photo from all the cards and kind of cut them out. And like we have like this wall mural almost of like, you know, all the people who send us one kind of thing like with their family. So yeah. Um, so it's kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, I, I like, uh, I, I like this. I really like this story. It's very thoughtful and, uh, I think, uh, I think it'll serve the brand well. All right. Our final story now, uh, this week, kind of sticking with the holiday, uh, Christmas, uh, traditions, uh, the Salvation Army, uh, who is out now, uh, with their Christmas kettle campaigns, collecting donations to, uh, do the work that they do all over the world, uh, to, uh, help, uh, 
you know, those in need and, and homeless um, and those that are, you know, just, just really uh, struggling, uh, which is a lot of what the work the Salvation Army does. Uh, you know, you've probably seen them out on the, on the street corners, uh, you know, ringing the bells and playing some carols maybe and, and you know, having the, the, the Army little uh, kettle there collecting donations. Um, they've kind of realized coming into uh, the modern times now that not everybody's got cash or coins on them to put into these things. And so this year they're accepting donations using Apple and Google Pay. Um, and so they've got uh, built into to some of the kettles now these smart chips and QR codes uh, on the kettles themselves across the country. This is in the US. Uh, and so you can scan with your phone, uh, you know, using Apple Pay or Google Pay uh, to make a, a sort of a digital donation, if you will. Um, so it's as simple as that. I mean, uh, so, you know, I would encourage you if you see one of these out there, get out there, support them. There's no excuse now if you don't have any uh, coins or cash in your pocket. You have a phone, everybody does, and it's probably a Google uh, or Apple phone, and you can do this. So uh, they, they serve, uh, last year alone, 23 million people uh, in the U.S. So, wow. Yeah, so there you go. I say, woohoo, I'm excited about this story. Seriously, this is such good, good news. Um, I think that, you know, I love certain things places that are always really thoughtful about how you can give and how you can donate. And, um, I know this is like really silly, but we have this, uh, like Asian fast food kind of cuisine here called Panda Express. And every time you go in, which was not very often, but my husband had actually told me about it. And so I wanted to go in and see it for myself. They have like, you can just round up. So, you know, your meals like Nine twenty-four, So you can just spend an extra 76 cents and that 76 cents goes to, you know, the charity that they're featuring. And so I love the convenience of anything that's like, Hey, it's easy to, you know, just give some extra change or it's easy yeah. just to give, you know, $5 because my phone is right there. And I feel like this is actually going to increase the size of the donations because previously it's just been like, whatever change I have left in my purse, or do I have any cash on me? Whereas now it's like, I'm not going to give a dollar donation. I'm going to get $5. Right. So I feel like they're going to see some really great returns um, on their investment here. So yeah, I'm yeah, excited. So it just makes sense. Right. I mean, yeah. we're in a different time and, and that's just what the, if you want to have your best chance of raising as much money as you can to do this work, you know, you gotta, you gotta go with the time. So good for them. Be generous so people. For this week. <laughs> that's our show for this week. You've been listening to episode number 443 of not this week in location-based marketing, but Location Weekly, uh, the new name for our podcast. Um, so, you know, if you've got feedback for us, if you've got story ideas, as always, reach out to us. But, you know, even more so now, tell us what you think about the new branding, the new intro, uh, the new name, all that sort of stuff. Uh, we would appreciate uh, your, your thoughts and support. And... Um, you know, uh, of course, we'll be back next week with yet another show. So thank you for listening and watching, everybody. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.